Hello everyone. Happy Sunday. This is Simon with Avatrade. Welcome to our weekly webinars. And uh, as, as you know, the title is Mapping uh, Your Week Ahead. And in simple words, especially to explain it to new people, what we're trying to do simply here is to create the plan for the week. And uh, I like to quote traders when they say, you plan your trade and then you trade your plan. And it's, especially in trading, planning is important. It just removes unnecessary chaos from your trading and uh, creates a better way of organized trading and especially on the side of the risk management. That's of course the most important thing and aspect of trading. A few things about myself. My name is Simon Friedman. I'm a senior account manager with Avatrade. And uh, it's been 24 years this June exactly since I started to trade on Wall Street. I've done about 11 years of prop trading from the year 2000. And after that, I moved away from prop and uh, continued trading and also started to mentor and educate others. And I'm very happy I have this great opportunity to assist our traders at Avatrade. Uh, the agenda of the webinar is pretty much the same thing every week. We'll be talking about indices, stocks, commodities, and forex. Prior to that, we'll uh, talk a little bit about fundamentals, the week that just ended and the upcoming week. Uh, we'll go through economic calendar, trying to see what's important. And this week, we have very important events. We'll go through them one by one. Risk warning, you can find the full statement at avatray.com. And of course, everything we do here is purely educational. We do not suggest any trades. Social media channels, I uh, highly recommend for you to subscribe and follow us on uh, Telegram, X, and the YouTube channel, which is my favorite. You have a lot of things being added on a daily basis. If you are watching this on YouTube, please feel free to click the likes, uh, share with people that you think might benefit from this, and uh, subscribe and click on that bell so you'll be notified when new things are coming. And if you are watching this on YouTube channel, of course, uh, we would appreciate your comments and suggestions and feedback in the comments. That would be very, very, very important. Okay, uh, we'll move to the trading terminal. Uh, as you could see, if you, this is not the first time I removed all the levels and uh, I just switched totally to MT5 as it has uh, more instruments here including the stocks, of course. So I don't need to jump between the two terminals. And therefore, then uh, no uh, levels here. So we'll start from scratch. OK, so uh, speaking of last week, uh, we had a few things happening. Uh, and of course, the highlight was the NFPs on Friday, which came higher than expected. Markets reacted to it, the downside. Uh, dollar reacted to the upside, gold sold and uh, the um, probability of the July uh, rate cut, of course, uh, diminished. So something to really understand, something to take into cons consideration. Now we had uh, 272,000 jobs added, forecast was 180. Uh, we had uh, unemployment on that end, uh, rose to 4% from 3.9. And uh, the average hourly earning rose 0.4% in May. And the expectation was 0.3. So the numbers are kind of stubborn and uh, not helping the Feds with their decision to eventually cut the rate. So it looks like it's pushing that decision uh, further down. Uh, some analysts are saying that they don't expect any rate cuts this year. Some are still expecting uh, some until the uh, till the end of the year, especially around the election time. So I guess we'll find out what's happening. As far as numbers, we had Dow Jones Industrial uh, fell 87 points or 0.2 percent. S&P's was down 0.1 percent, and Nasdaq was down 0.2 percent. Okay. Uh, a few things, as you know, I like to take the screenshots from uh, nice articles here. So you can find these articles at uh, marketwatch.com. And something important, and the title says it already uh, right here, three stocks now account for 20% of S&P 500 value. 
that's making some investors nervous, right? So, uh, and those three stocks, uh, NVIDIA, Microsoft, and Apple, those are three stocks that actually uh, market value around $3 trillion. So Apple was the first, as you remember, that Microsoft bypassed it. And um, uh, I think uh, last week, NVIDIA uh, became first, Microsoft in the second place, and, and Apple is the third. And uh, it is kind of, uh, uh, you know, it would make the traders, investors nervous because if those three stocks decide just to go down and they're responsible for 20% of S&P value, uh, the index could tank as well. At the same time, if they are moving higher, uh, it would take S&Ps higher as well. So we'll be uh, definitely watching what's happening there. Now, speaking of NVIDIA, and uh, this is also an article from the Market Watch. Uh, it says right here, uh, let's read it together. NVIDIA stock continues to be on the tier and executives at the chip company are reaping the benefits. Shares have climbed in 2024, small investors buy stock in NVIDIA, which produces chips to power gen generative artificial intelligence. NVIDIA stock has gained 144% so far this year and 211% over the last 12 months, closing at 1,208.88 on Friday. Executives from company have recently taken advantage of these gains. As previously reported by Barron's, NVIDIA said in late May regulatory filing that CEO Hansen Huang adopted the rule one, whatever the number is, I'm going to waste time for that. Uh, March 15 to sell 600,000 shares through March 31st. He wasn't alone. The filing also mentioned three other executives of NVIDIA who recently sold shares of the company. And it says right here, Deborah Shockwist, NVIDIA Executive Vice President of Operations, also uh, reported she, that she wanted to sell 41,140 shares of NVIDIA through June 2025. She was followed on March by uh, Chief Executive Officer Colette Kress, who adopted the same rule for the sale of up to 50,000 shares common tag through May 15, 2025. And lastly, the filing says NVIDIA Executive Vice President of Worldwide Field Operation at Jaipuri adopted Rule 105B1 for the sale of up to 100,000. 832 shares of NVIDIA common stock through July 11, 2025. I mean, you can say, yes, they need money and they just want to cash in. Uh, some would say, okay, why would you sell if you think the company is going to go much higher? Though it's always a two opinion there. But it's just the fact that the executives are selling or using this opportunity uh, to uh, cash on their on the uh, holdings in the company. Okay, another thing, uh, this is a four hour chart on uh, 10 year yields, and that's where the NFP numbers came. Uh, 10 year yields flew to the upside. And as we uh, discussed in the previous sessions, we said that that would usually mean for the dollar uh, to have a significant move to the upside and the goal to go down. We'll take a look when we get to the charts. It's very important. Economic calendar. Uh, as I said, very important things this week, especially on Wednesday, we'll get that in a second. So GDP numbers uh, today from Japan. We have employment data on Tuesday from uh, UK and Wednesday is the day. CPI from China. Uh, CPI numbers from uh, US, that's another bunch of data after the NFPs, high NFPs for the Feds. And on Tuesday, they're starting the meeting and we have the decision on interest rate and the policy statement uh, right after the CPI, a few hours later. And the, as usual, 30 minutes later, press conference of Mr. Powell, where we're gonna see market jumping up and down on every move he makes, like in that song. Uh, so Wednesday is the day. Uh, also, we have Governor Bank of Canada speaking. Thursday, employment data from Australia and PPI numbers 
from US as well. Friday, important day for Japanese yen and a Japanese index. Uh, I didn't find the times that they don't show it. Uh, that's the interest rate decision, monetary policy statement, and the press conference, and the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index on Friday as well. Now, I forgot to mention, uh, especially for new people, this is the economic calendar. It's a uh, public information. You can uh, access it on our web trader or the mobile app. Also, any provider that you can Google, it's all public information from the same source. And here I take the high impact events only. There's so much more. You can uh, you can filter through it. You can choose what's relevant for your trading. And as I always say, uh, it's everybody's business to trade into the data or ignore it or do other things. But I think every trader uh, must know ahead of time, especially the most important events so you don't get caught by surprise and you can plan your trading accordingly. So this is economic calendar. Again, uh, the most important things, the CPI followed by the Fed's uh, decision on interest rate. As of now, there's almost uh, 100% probability that there's no interest rate uh, cut or any changes. And of course, uh, Powell is going to be drilled at the press conference with all kinds of questions. What's next? What's the plan? And so on, as usual. So this is the economic calendar. Now we're going to move to the trading platform and we'll start uh, going through things. As we said, we'll start with indices. And let's start with China, as usual. Uh, China had a nice move uh, towards the, uh, the end of the week. Uh, we had a nice move to the upside. Uh, normally, as I said, with the China move, uh, we would watch uh, oil, copper, Australian and New Zealand dollars. Those are the instruments that react to Chinese economy. So we'll, when we get there, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at them. So China had a nice move to the upside. It looks like it's uh, on the way to some recoveries. This is the weekly chart. That's weird. The weekly chart is not showing the continuation. Let's see. That is weird. Okay, never mind. Uh, whatever we were showing before disregarded. So uh, Chinese index had a move apparently uh, move to the downside. Um, s and as we said, all three indices, U.S. indices, had a uh, sell-off after the NFPs. And we can take a look, actually, uh, what happens. This is the announcement of NFPs, 1230 GMT. Initial move was to the downside, strong move. And then, as you know, uh, a lot of people uh, call um, trading a speculative and manipulative. So take a look. By the first move, initial move, the first 30 minutes went down. Then we went bypassing the pre data levels, went all the way high on SPs, hit the level of 53.85. And then towards the end of the session, we sold. And we kind of stopped somewhere in, uh, in between of that initial move. You take this uh, 30 minute move, about uh, $40 move, and we stop somewhere in, in the middle. So definitely it's gonna be a volatile week, especially as we get closer to Wednesday's decision and press conference and everything else. Uh, so that's uh, S&P's NASDAQ. As you could see as well, we have this tail up and down and close somewhere in in between. And uh, Dow Jones is really uh, behind the S&P and, uh, and NASDAQ. Uh, overall, we actually have a move up on, uh, on uh, Dow Jones futures. Friday was an up day. But overall, if you take a look in the weekly chart, we are far away from the highs comparing to 
NASDAQ and S&Ps, where we are actually still at the all-time highs waiting there. Now, UK, FTSE was down on Friday as well. We had a recent uh, slide to the downside. Then we, had, we tried to recover a little bit, and it looks like we, we start making uh, a lower highs. And uh, if this continues and we make a lower low here, that would confirm probably the a change of trend, at, at least for now, for some analysts. Germany. That's weird. The charts are jumping. I apologize for that. Germany also on Friday sold was sitting on daily chart right on the 50-day moving average here. Uh, let's see how this week will uh, play out. Uh, let's move to individual stocks now. And uh, we'll start with those three that are representing the 20% of S&Ps, as we said, as the article said. All right, so as you could see here, it's already adjusted to the price. As you know, uh, NVIDIA, they decided to split and for one. So the price here, they took the closing price of Friday. And when Monday uh, market opens, you're going to be trading uh, the price 10 times less than the Friday was trading. And the holders would get uh, 10 times more stock or shares that they were holding. So just to give an example, if somebody had one share of NVIDIA at $1,200 coming Monday, uh, the person will have 10 shares of $120 each, which is the same uh, money-wise or equity-wise. Okay, so here comes NVIDIA. Uh, normally, uh, when the price is being cut by, uh, by uh, split, it could possibly attract more traders. So it's going to be interesting to watch how NVIDIA starts after the split. Microsoft trading at 424. Friday was uh, a red day, as it was for most of the market. Apple, on the other hand, had a nice move. And for Apple, in general, strong recovery from uh, April 22nd. Apple, uh, Apple has been doing great, and they're actually starting their uh, Worldwide Developers Conference uh, that's going to be started by CEO Tim Cook in Supertina, California. And that's usually a very strong event. It goes for the whole week, the conference. And uh, a lot of investors are focusing what Apple will represent as far as AI, artificial intelligence, and everybody's waiting. But those news, uh, there were some uh, things saying for if you know using AI on, on uh, iPhones, it would only work from iPhone 15 Pro and uh, later uh, uh, phones. Just a little detail here. In any event, we're having here a nice temporary recovery. This is a weekly chart with triple top, and uh, Apple, as I said, had a very nice recovery and. Uh, if uh, we hear any any good things, uh, we might actually break out and go uh, breaking through the highs. This recovery is very, very strong. This is the second month, as you could see here. So that's on Apple. Now, um, we have this week uh, three uh, high-tech companies are reporting. We have Oracle reporting on Tuesday. It's also in very interesting territory. Uh, since the sell-off, been trying to recover. This is a double tap here. And as the market was uh, moving lower on Friday, Oracle is actually moving higher into the uh, earnings. So we'll be watching that definitely broadcast on Wednesday. Reporting as well, the earnings. Uh, stock looks good at the highs. So definitely we might see some moves. Uh, I mean, logically, great news would push the stock in breaking through the highs and vice versa. Adobe is reporting on Thursday. 
not doing so great lately, as you can see here. This uh, drop started uh, from the beginning of the year when the whole market was running. Adobe was actually selling. And uh, last week was the first week of uh, a little bit in green on the daily chart, but the whole week moving higher. Uh, we are below all three moving averages. So uh, there's some hopes on the earnings that are coming on Thursday, definitely. Um, let's take a look at Teva. I'm not going to go through all the major stocks as they did react to the sell off. So dollar in, uh, in uh, excuse me for sniffling a little bit. Uh, let's just go through the banks really quick. Goldman uh, reacted to the downside. The rest of banks actually moved higher on Friday, as you can see here. So we'll continue watching banks. What's next? And uh, Teva Pharmaceutical. Still holding to these recent gains here around $17. We did close at $16.82. And um, for new people especially, I don't know what's, got, what's happening with this chart here. Let's see. Okay, weekly chart. So it looks, it looks like it's accumulating, getting ready for possible continuation. If you remember, we spoke about some analysts uh, setting up the target of $19, $19.20. And uh, uh, Teva is holding these recent gains that were pretty much uh, robust gains here. And uh, we'll continue watching that. Commodities, let's move to commodities. Uh, pretty much the metals are down, the energy is up. Here we go, gold. A strong reaction to the downside with the NFPs and the 10 year yields. As we mentioned, the yields went up, the gold just tanked below 2300, below the 50 day moving average that was trading around. So let's see how this week's data and the decisions will uh, affect gold. Uh, copper as well, as we mentioned, uh, with China, copper is uh, sensitive to that. So uh china did move lower this week and friday especially and copper sold on friday as well we did break similar to gold below the 50-day moving average here we're between the 50 and 100 moving average the energy uh you know what let's take a look at palladium really quick palladium is holding uh, Previous lows around the, those levels, we close at 918. And if you if you remember 950, we had the level that we watched around 950 where the instrument was bouncing. We are trading below, which is established on Thursday. We, we established that resistance. We couldn't break above. So we'll continue watching Palladium at these levels. Uh, crude oil. Okay, I guess it is it is jumping and then it shows the right data. Okay, uh, crude oil, we had a uh, two-day uh, recovery after a strong move to the downside from 80 all the way to the low of 72 and a half around that. Uh, we had the move uh, on uh, Wednesday and Thursday and then Friday we had a little bit in red. Uh, again, uh, we spoke about last week, the OPEC decided to keep their cuts until the end of 2025. Nevertheless, the oil moved lower. So we'll continue, at least now, uh, we have some references. So this recent low, it could show some kind of a support around 72 and a half. And if we decide to move higher, the 200 moving average for oil could be the first test possibly. So we'll continue watching that. Natural gas continues stepping up nicely. We had three consecutive sessions breaking through the previous resistance. Let's see. The higher was uh, 292.2. We closed slightly higher. And if you take a look at the weekly chart, we're slowly, slowly climbing higher here. If we continue higher, uh, as I said in previous session, the three would be psychological level if we continue higher. 
this beginning of the year, we had a 3.389. We might continue to uh, move towards that level. So that's an actual guess. And uh, Coco. We did have a sell-off, as, as you remember, that we had uh, uh, some accumulation around this level, around the, right uh, around the 100 moving average. And since then, we're slowly, slowly climbing. We did hit 10,000 again this past week. We started the week actually hitting 10,036. Uh, on Friday, we hit 10,092 and closed uh, two points below 10,998. Nine, uh, 9, okay, so that uh, 10,000 point, 10,000 mark, it would be something to watch on Coco. Uh, physically, uh, fundamentally, there's still an issue uh, with supply. Uh, this was uh, a strong reaction to the downside after hitting 11,700, I think we hit, yes, 11,713. And now look how nice the recovery is. And it's a psychological point of 10,000, definitely worth watching. Okay, uh, we'll move to Forex now. And we'll start with dollar index. As I mentioned, that was a strong reaction to the NFPs. Take a look. You can see 30 minutes. That was initial jump uh, to the downside. and. We continue higher, and till the end of the day, we continue higher. Closed at the high of the day. That's very promising for dollar. And uh, we are hitting the 50-day moving average here. Big range uh, on Friday. So definitely we'll be watching what's next. Of course, all the majors did the opposite move. Here comes uh, the pound, closing at 27.20. If you remember, uh, on the old chart, we had the channel between 26, one, sorry, 126 and 128. As we did, I worked that channel for a very long time. Just zoom out for a moment so you can see why. See, a lot of actions here. So after hitting that 128, we couldn't break it. And of course, the NFPs and the move on the dollar moved the currency lower. Euro dollar as well. We actually at the strategic level one of eight. One oh eight is the key level for Europe. Here for Euro dollar. We'll definitely be watching what's next. And the rest of the currencies. Similar, of course, the reaction to the strong dollar. Uh, dollar Swiss, dollar CAD. Start is a little slow. Dollar cat had a nice move to the upside. And uh, Aussie and New Zealand dollar sold, as we mentioned. They also reacted to Canadian data. Now, on the Australian dollar, we're hitting right 50 day moving average. Definitely worth watching. And New Zealand dollar also a huge sell of take a look. New Zealand dollar, for some reason, looks weaker than the rest of the major currencies. We just erased almost two weeks of the move to the upside in one day and we closed at the lows. So definitely we'll be watching that. Now, as I mentioned, there's a decision from uh, Bank of Japan towards the end of the week. So we'll be watching uh, Japanese yen. As you could see here on the, on the strength of a dollar, we didn't break through the recent highs. It just shows some possible uh, Increase in value of Japanese yen. And as you could see here, the rest of the currencies actually sold against the yen the recent days, some more than others. But it looks like yen is regaining some strength. CHFJPY, definitely worth watching against this level. This was the spike that we had at the end of April. We are fighting with that level again, around 175. 
Let's see how it works. So definitely yen is in focus together with the US dollar, of course, with the NFPs. So decisions from Bank of Japan, very, very important. Okay, and uh, let's take a look at uh, Mr. Bitcoin, where are you? Mr. Bitcoin. Okay, it looked like Mr. Bitcoin went down with the market against the dollar. So the dollar was strong. Bitcoin was uh, weak. And uh, as of now, we're still having this resistance holding around 71,500. Take a look. We had a strong resistance here back in March and April. And we tested it again on May 20th. But a few spikes above never managed to go higher so as of now 71 and a half remains the resistance if we continue lower here we will be watching the averages and also this candle here the high range definitely worth watching the low of this candle was 66,024 so we are uh, about five and a half thousand range again as we mentioned i think last time and we somewhere almost in between. So we'll continue watching, of course, Bitcoin. As of now, looks like 71 and a half is the resistance and uh, 66,000 is the immediate support. Okay, that's it pretty much. Uh, again, uh, just to summarize what we spoke about, uh, we have important events. That's mostly on Wednesday, the interest rate decision, press conference, monetary decision from Bank of Japan. We have a few more earnings coming up this week, as we mentioned in uh, uh, Oracle, Tuesday broadcam on Wednesday and Adobe on Thursday. We have uh, the World uh, Developers Conference at the Apple Starts this coming Monday. and. Uh, a lot of events, a lot of pressure, a lot of attention, and a lot of expectations from what Feds are going to say, specifically Powell at the press conference. So it's going to be an intense week. Uh, I want to wish everyone a good weekend, whatever is left, and uh, enjoy it. Get some energy, prepare yourself for the upcoming week, control your risks, be happy, all the best. Take care.